Yeah. Should we get started? Yeah. All right, we might have a few stragglers. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Carolyn from Milwaukee. She does Hi. all of their social media, and she's awesome. And she's going to talk to us about some blogging strategies because she is very involved in how they create their content um, to make it social friendly and user friendly and all around does a bang up job. So. She's super smart, pay attention. Super <laughs> <laughs> kind introduction. <laughs> As I talk about how I'm hungover. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, well, I'm happy to be here with you guys, and obviously they, you know, um, when I was kind of asked to come in and maybe have a, a conversation on this, I, on Milwaukee, we really just kind of started doing social media the past three years. Um, since I took it over. I am the content and social media manager from Milwaukee. So pretty much if something is on our social media, I'm handling it, I'm putting it there. We are a little bit different in the fact that we, you know, probably have 10 to 20 new stories every day on our website. So you, I'm kind of picking and choosing what's going to go on our social media, um, what things are going to be hot topic, trying to get people to interact. Um, I guess I also was sent some examples kind of of the personality websites. I went on and took a look. Um, and I guess I'm curious, the one question I wanted to ask of you guys is, are you posting all of your own blogs to your own social media, to the overall page? The station page. Station, station page. page. Yeah. Occasionally, the morning shows have their own, so they do both. OK, they do both. Well, that's, that's good. I have quite a few of the jocks do both. I know, I know mm -hmm. I, I, when I put a blog up, I'll use a bit bit.ly. Okay. And I'll yeah. put it on both the And you'll be able to track too how yeah. many clicks you got. Yeah. Um, well, many, many of the jobs don't use their personal pages for listeners. Yes. But which, which I understand. Honestly, that's. A, I think that anybody who works in media now realizes <coughs> what a, a pop, big part social media plays and in getting new people to come to your page. And I think it is kind of a challenge of like separating your personal life from you know your public life. And I, I think that's probably why it's somewhat of a transition point with, with media. Um, people like to know people. So you can, you can write something that's going to go completely viral, and people are going to be like, oh, that's crazy. But ultimately, you want them to like you, so that they continue to come back and hear your brand. Um, I think with us, one of the things that makes On Milwaukee different is it, because we write n numerous stories a day, people do kind of do get to get to know the personality through writing. Now, they get to know that through on air with you guys. So it's kind of a transition point, I think. Um, I did see a lot of things that I like to see, which is embedding Instagram photos, embedding tweets, because those are the kinds of things that are probably going to go viral regardless. Um, but I, I think maybe some of the things that you guys could do is kind of embed some self videos. Um, Kind of that behind the scenes stuff that we talked about even like on wonky sharing for you guys I, I think you could do more of that on your own blogs and and let them get to see you in a different way instead of just maybe hear you every day um for us the top three things that do well and we're all in the Milwaukee market so i'm going to go on you each have you know your own little special uh your own little specialties are going to do well, but nostalgia is probably the number one thing. So, I mean, like, we have, you know, 50 reasons why you're old school Milwaukee. It's still one of our top five best <coughs> stories every single week. <laughs> every single week. Um, stories on the old cookie house or stories on a restaurant that closed 10 years ago, but everybody went to for, you know, homecoming and prom. Um, or when was the last time that you went out and, you know, visited a, an apple orchard? You know, like, what's your favorite apple orchard? My, the number one thing for me when I'm posting to social media is getting a response out of that person. You can, you can get people to click through, and we can say that's, that's the most important thing. I, I, for me, my job is essentially to get people to interact with it. The more people that interact with it, the more people that are going to see it. You know, you can, you can pay to promote a post on Facebook. You can do all of those things, but ultimately, you want it to be interactive. Um, and for people to connect with you on a different level. Um, maybe it's asking questions. Uh, I guess maybe what I could ask next, next is, what are your biggest challenges in daily blogging? <coughs> and maybe that could kind of open the conversation up to how, how I can help you. It's going to be my guinea pig. Well, you know, for me, you know, uh, and I think I can speak for most people in this room, is that 
multitasking is a, is mm -hmm. a challenge for us here as it is in many places and you know I want to engage with my audience as much as humanly possible so I guess you know I, I make it a point to put a blog up every day am I not doing enough should because I know uh, some of my jocks some of my you know my jocks from auto, my, my OAPs on air personalities from outside the market you know my midday person on 97.3 she puts up three four five a day so what's too much what's too little I yeah. guess is a I guess is a good starting point let me ask you this how are you how are you guys gauging success of of these blocks is it is it a traffic to the yes. website? Yeah. Is to it the website, views, yeah. Page views. Okay, it's page views. And do you guys see those reports then? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you know exactly how many people are coming. Okay, well, you're already taking it one step further. I can tell you, it's, with On Milwaukee, it's generally myself and, and a few of the, the heads who would maybe look and see what the impressions are. Because essentially, I'm not, I, we personally, yes, we want the impressions, but ultimately, like if you're posting, a blog and if, if the purpose of it is to get a reaction out of people then impressions probably isn't going to be my my success gauge you know success gauge is going to be how many people commented on it how many people shared it um, those kinds of things that's where even I think an Instagram post can do more than just putting up something that's you know to fill content I, I think the number one thing probably with having content that is going to keep people engaged is you don't want to overload them, but you also, you want it to be something that is on a personal level. Now, all of the blogs that I went and looked at, all, all of the on-air personalities, all of them were in tune with kind of what's hot, what's not. Um, those are the kinds of things that you want to do. Now, are you guys writing your own headlines? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. <clears throat> Just, you know, I mean, there. It's definitely, um, it's trendy. It, it's gonna pull somebody in, which is what you want it to do. Um, and you, you want people to wanna give their opinion and wanna know what it is, you know? So, you know, people use still use the term clickbait. I don't really look at it as clickbait. I look at it as you're, you're trying to pull somebody in and then keep them there so that they continue to come back. Um, the number one thing that I would say as far as trying to gauge how often you should do it is if it's something that is relevant and timely then I would make it I would make it a high priority the number one reason why I say that and we are challenged with this as well is because you know how quickly things drop out of, of being that trendy thing so if you don't write about the fact that you know there's a Ryan Adams remake song with Taylor Swift and which version is better you know, you, you know in three days nobody's going to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you don't post it now, you're, you're losing that opportunity. But that's where I said sometimes it's about being smarter. It's about things that are going to be more nostalgic or, you know, aren't going to drop in and out of the trendiness right away. As an example, the old school Milwaukee things. Like the things that are going to live way longer than just that two day period. Did so you, did you guys do, a, did you guys do a, like 50 hottest Milwaukeeans? Oh yes. Yeah. We did. I'll like, see that. You used to do it yearly. Do you, is is yeah. it a yearly thing or just a? We have not written so you, one. You we have last year. No, nope. and we have not probably written one in four years, maybe. Yeah. What number are you? Um, uh, I didn't make the list, man. Is that it's why you're asking? Why you're asking? Yeah. Right now. So <laughs> upset, my question is two parts. One, can I get on it? And two, um, no. But my point was though is that it, it's okay. pretty old. <laughs> exactly. It is. It is pretty old. Uh, I'll be honest. I, in this social media world, it can be even lot. well. People still people share will all the share, time. especially if they find themselves on it. Mm -hmm. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I saw it on Kid O'Shea's blog a yeah. few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, we're you're way higher than him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is where the nostalgia. I mean, honestly, when we sit down on our Monday morning meetings, I say, okay, what nostalgia can we do this week? What trendy can we do this week? What are the top three things that are going to be most talked about in Milwaukee this week? That's really kind of how we come up with, all right, then we'll kind of assign things out. They, keep in mind, our writers, they have to write, you know, two to three things every day regardless. You know, so those are kind of things that are above and beyond what they're already doing, but they are a priority. If you are not doing something that's kind of nostalgic, because those nostalgia pieces are going to last and last and last. How and, often do you repeat those lists? 
I mean, I will throw them back up on a Throwback Thursdays as well on our social media. That's kind of also the benefit of it. Like the hot ones, I believe I posted both of those probably about six weeks ago on social media, and you'll still see people sharing it today from six, po you know, a post six weeks ago. Well, certain things like that. Yeah. One thing that I do personally, I'll go back. Yeah. In blogs that I wrote a year ago, and update and it. just change the date okay. and repost it today. Do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing today for a film festival piece. Like, I'm just going to go ahead like and change that. the date. Does it automatically go back to the top? Yep, right? yep. Automatically yep. goes right back to the top. Oh, just yeah. by yeah. chance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've already got my blogs cool. already cool. dated. And I just need five blogs to hold your mind. Same things I've posted for the last two years. Well, it's... repost. It is about being smart, especially because we all can get bogged down in everyday things that you have. Okay, so if you can kind of take a take a look and say, okay, well, what things did I already write that maybe I could repurpose instead of you having to do, it could just be, well, we will repost stuff and just say update at the top and we'll give an update of, okay, this is what's actually happening with this business now or, oh, we updated with some additional pictures. It's giving you some additional content. It could even be that you got into a social media conversation with somebody else on it and you thought that it was relevant and so you wanted to embed that into it. Um, you could embed your own social media, your own Facebook page right into a blog and essentially have a conversation right there with your reader, with your listeners. Um, I think for us, honestly, where we've grown the most is Twitter. Um, last year at this time, we had 30,000 followers. As of today, we're at over 45K. That's with really no social promoted posts on it. That's with no, that's where viral and having things that Milwaukeeans want to hear about, they're going to they're gonna continue to follow it. And I think because each of your stations have a, a little niche, I, I think that the ability for you is to really kind of hone in on those relationships. For coming up with content ideas, well, yes, we watch the competition. You know, I mean, everybody's going to. You're going to kind of see, well, what's new, what's trending. Some of the other hints that I see, maybe, um, go to Reddit. Does everybody know what Reddit mm -hmm. is? No. Do it every day. <laughs> um, Reddit is essentially a, a, a message content posting board. Um, it, it is user generated completely. But you will see things that are trending within it, and you can you can actually search certain topics on there. But you can kind of just see what's going to rise up, what's not. There is a Milwaukee page for Reddit. You can just go to that specific forum thread. You can kind of see what people are posting about. Um, I think for for me, as far as giving content ideas to our writers, uh, every day I go to Reddit. You know, I go to. There's also a Google trending page. Buzzfeed has a trending page. Um, those are things that are all probably going to do realistically well. The hard thing is, it, is if you miss that point of even a few hours, it's probably not. And then you're better off trying to find something else. You know, that, that's maybe going to be that next thing, or maybe it's something personal instead of. But I, I do recommend going to, to the Reddits of the world. Um, honestly, if nothing else, for you to kind of get a gauge of maybe a, a social media source that isn't as curated as Facebook is. Facebook is, is very curated and of course like everything that people are being shown is based on, on other things that they've already been shown or clicked on or liked. So they don't really, while yes they can like your page, if they never click on anything or they never comment on anything, you're, they're not going to see your page again for a while. Um, Reddit is, is, is true kind of grassroots social media is how I would look at it. It's um, also unfiltered content. Oh yeah, it's, it's they're going to put it all out there. <laughs> yeah. They're going to put it all out there. Because it's on Reddit doesn't mean we should be posting it, is what I'm saying. I'm not we should be looking at someone. Oh, yeah, no. you, you, we might get fired for <laughs> clicking on certain things yeah. on Reddit. Well, th this is somewhat true. I, mean, I probably have a little bit more free reign of, of what I can do as a content manager. Yeah, that's a classic. Um, but where, what kind of places do you guys go to to get your content now? We have, sure prep we have a lot of prep services. Mm -hmm. I just steal from other people in the company. Well, you know, you, well, that's nice that there are a lot of prep services. And they offer video, yeah. and they're really British helpful trending. that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's trending. Absolutely. Anything that pops up trending on Twitter or Facebook is always a good start for me. 
Wow, that, that's a good rule to have. Fred is actually right, though. You know, the other, because, you know, you got 850 radio stations. Right. And especially if you're a CHR, right. you know, oldies, you look at those other stations, look at their morning shows. Yeah. And see what, you know, especially the, guy, the guys that are on the East Coast, because they're already. Right, they're already. So all you right. beat them, you yeah. know. Yeah. You beat the Midwest then. Just steal their stuff. Well, you know, you do what you have to do. It's a doggy dog world out there. Well, it's our company, right? No, it, I mean, it is. Why, why wouldn't you? The same way that we talk about repurposing content for, you know, St. Patrick's Day for next year, you know, yeah. the, the, it's the same thing as repurposing from something else within your own company. Mm -hmm. And it, I do think, in a lot of ways, it can be overwhelming to people that don't want to have to blog every day or don't want to have to blog numerous times a day. So the more efficient that you can be at it and utilizing those tools, the better it's going to be. Um, I, I think it's great that you guys have all those prep services that you're able to embed a video and you know not have to to deal with going out and finding that. They're not local. That's no. not a disadvantage. You usually are dealing with mass, you know. Yeah. But that's okay. Other sources for local. That's okay. So where's the best place for local content, yeah. would you say? On the On the Milwaukee app. It's my newspaper every day. Where do yeah. you get your content? <laughs> I like I said. For Milwaukee. For Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I honestly look at everything. So I probably look at 10 different things every day. Yeah. I kind of have my routine of, okay, I look at what we have. I look at Twitter. I look at Instagram. I follow the Instagram hashtags for Milwaukee. Um, those are things that you're probably going to see them on Twitter or Instagram before you're going to see them anywhere else. So even if you, I mean, I, I use a... I use Hootsuite on my laptop, and I have a Milwaukee hashtag that is just shared. It's just saved as a stream. Um, I also have one that is just MKE Dining, because obviously dining for us is a big part. It's very easy for me to just kind of go back in and look. Um, I also take a look at what shows are in town for that night or for that week, and you start watching their Instagrams and their Twitter because then once they start tweeting out, hey, we're in Milwaukee, it's a way for you to repurpose that tweet or repurpose that Instagram and be like, hey, they're in Milwaukee, like, <laughs> where do you want to see them out? Um, and I think, especially for you guys, because you guys are so entrenched like in the music world, I would think that that would be a good opportunity for you guys. Um, I didn't dig that deep, I guess, to see if, if you guys are sharing that kind of stuff via blogs, you know, like, Hey, Dirk Bentley is coming to town. Like, what what are the five places he should go to in Milwaukee? When I talk about the nostalgia factor, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah he's like, going to be here. He's going to be here. What you know? frozen yogurt places? Yeah, yeah. yeah, where should he go? Yeah, where yeah. should he go try custard? What's custard, your yeah. top custard in town? Yeah. You know, like think of those nostalgic things that you know that yes, like people are going to probably connect it to Garth Brooks, but beyond that, everybody has an opinion on who has the best custard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or if you have a on air or a personality that's going to be coming in, ask your readers beforehand in a blog. You know, like. Hey, where should we take them to have a burger? Where's your favorite burger? You know, like try picking up on some of those things that people are passionate about, because and that are have a local tie. Have a local tie. Well, I think too. I mean, people just like to give their opinion yeah. on anything. So, even something as simple as I'm debating whether to go here or here for lunch. Where do you think I should yeah. go? Like the response to something that simple, mm -hmm. or is Meg here? Mm -hmm. um, Meg from uh, Big FM is yeah. pregnant, so like something like she is. Which she is. <laughs> well, you know, I'm at Target right now. We're going between this crib or this crib. Like what do you? What do, do you think? Yeah. Like you know, people just really like. Like to, even if you're really not, just yeah. take the two pictures and put it up. <laughs> you know, right. right? Or I think about things like. Um, one of your boys plays baseball, right? Football? My boy plays baseball, yeah. So, you know, okay, so here's a picture of the finger. Yeah. Do you think it's broken, sprained? Should we go to the hospital? Do you think we should just yeah. ice it? Like, I can only imagine, because people just, they want to feel helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, and then the follow-up to that is like, yeah. you know, hey, we, we just happened. iced it, it's totally yeah. fine, thank you. Or it's like, yeah. oh, thank God we went to the hospital because it actually was broken. Yeah. Exploit failure. Yeah. 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 Once again, the power of broken bones. Yeah. So here you, you, can you should exploit everything that you have. Because some yeah. people have that connection, yeah. you know, that personal yeah. connection. Um, and then I was just going to ask a question about blogs. So, um, I mean, I, I'm not on air, so I don't write them for on air, but we write them for sales. Yeah. Um, do you recommend, you know, if they're writing, you know, posting three blogs a day or so, having yeah. 
kind of backup blogs that aren't necessarily timely. Yeah. So that if there isn't, you know, something that Miley Cyrus up. hasn't done yeah. anything crazy, or you know, someone didn't fall off the stage that we're just having, having a really bad day, really or you're having a bad writing <laughs> day to yeah. write something that you is. You should always have something in the hopper. You should probably you should always have two or three yes, that I do. are do. saved in your back pocket. Yeah. For a day where maybe there's just not something that you know is going to pop up into your feed to be like, oh my God, yes, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of our writers probably, granted, they are publishing you know five to seven long stories per week, and then they're probably doing three to five blogs per week. Um, it's a little bit different the fact that they have feature articles, obviously, that are you know in-depth interviews and pictures and going out and doing that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think some of it can just be, you, you could just spend one afternoon kind of banking things that are, that you could Milwaukee eyes, you know, that you could always kind of have in your back pocket. And then you're, maybe you're not stressed about, okay, well, what am I going to post at 1 p.m. today? Mm -hmm. You know, th there's kind of that thing. And it sounds like you guys do have a lot of tools that you're, you know, discretion as to, you know, what's going to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, I, honestly, I say it to our writers, but if you have a list of five to ten things every Monday, you know, that could be in your back pocket, you're, you're in a pretty good place. You know, um, I will also say collab or collaboration and talking to each other is probably the number one thing, especially because even in our world, people just kind of get honed in on what is their own little world. And what you guys can all give to each other is probably way more than you think you can. You mm -hmm. can probably make it way easier on each other if you're just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you haven't been down to Lisa and I's office to see it, but on one of our walls, we have an entire calendar of what the holidays are, what um, Packers games, what Badgers games, what events we're involved in on our wall. So even if we're not there, you can stop in and look at that on a Monday and say, okay, what's coming up this week? Or if you are really stuck, feel free to come talk to us because um, as a part of the digital team and Shane and Christina as well, like it is our job to be there for you to help you brainstorm. So if, you know, talking to your own morning show or talking to your own group isn't enough or you just want an easy access to that information, come visit us. <laughs> Try some lay on the couch a little bit. Yes, and we have a couch and a beanbag. Even better. Find some in my production. I know we probably are a little bit on time. I just want to like, I want to, I guess, help you guys. So if there's something, a specific challenge that I can help with, I will say please go to onwalkie.com and look for content. But ultimately, like, the same thing that I'm saying to you is what I say to our writers every day. I thought that what you guys have going on is a really good base. You know, I don't. I know that it can be stressful, so honestly, I, I'm a resource too. Heck, you can send out a Milwaukee tweet. I'll answer it. <laughs> can, can I ask, and I'm sorry if I, you covered this when I stepped no, off okay. for a moment, but do you, um, do you sell your posts to clients? Do you, if you have uh, somebody advertising or doing like a, pay, like a homepage takeover mm -hmm. or something, will you tweet stuff for them? Yes. Um, and how do you balance sound? We like will. It, it, it's a it's a hard hard line yeah. to tell, and it's one of the things that we're challenged with, and I'm sure you guys are as well, because mm -hmm. it's one of those things where clients just want it. Yeah. Um, but you have to ultimately you have to put a value on it, and are you? And let's say you end up doing some posts for somebody because it actually is just a really good partnership and you're not actually putting a dollar value on it, that's more of your sales end for them to figure out. But ultimately, it's it's your guys' individual brands yeah. you know, who are behind that. We do it. It, it. it is probably not as often as you think. It, you know, when we get sold for endorsements, for example, mm -hmm. they'll, uh, a, a client will often ask, well, how many social posts are you willing mm -hmm. to do for us per week per for the flight of the endorsement? So there's that, you know, the, there's the, the ratio of yeah. those kind of things. And then the other thing is, you know, my concern is always whenever, whether it's, you know, a show page, whether it's the, you know, the morning shows or whether it's, you know, uh, a jock page, um, the worst thing in the world is for your listeners, people who interact with you to feel like, to They're feel like it's a commercial it's because so, if it's a yeah. commercial, it just becomes the same white noise yeah. as everything else. No, I, I will agree with that. That's why I think that it has it has to be a balance of things. Like I'll give you an example. Actually, we do posts every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, saying here are the five things that you should do in Milwaukee today. Okay, some of them are certainly partners who pay to advertise with us. Some of them are not. 
and we generally don't promise that they're going to get put into one. We'll, we'll say like, you know, hey, there's a possibility we can include you in it because I would rather, you know, under promise and over deliver to somebody. Um, with I, I, I can't even tell you the amount of times that somebody comes over to my desk and says, hey, we need this to be posted, and you're just kind of like, e -e, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, I, I, it is a very, very fine line. Thankfully for us, most of the things that we are posting our readers are going to want to know about. So whether or not it's a paid customer or not probably isn't the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's also easy for us or for you to say, hey, our, you know, our listeners really don't give a shit about this. Um, they, they probably, if they don't, they'll just move on past it, and that's okay. But does that turn people off from coming back I, to you, I guess, is the, is the concern? Like... I don't want somebody to write us off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'll... I highly doubt one time is going to write them off. Okay. I, I also think that it's up to you guys to be creative as to how you're going to utilize those relationships. Because the reality is, you're not here if there's not people you know, buying these things. Right. So you need to be creative in figuring out, okay, what's the best way to do it? Maybe it's having fun with it. I don't know. Maybe it's you guys doing videos with some of these products and sharing those instead of just doing a, a boring post on it. You know, like have fun with it and let them get to see your personality. They'll watch it then regardless. They don't they don't care about the product. You know, they're they're listening to you. So take advantage of that as you're, you know, trying to get people to maybe be a little bit more open to those kinds of posts. We do not put sponsor on the Facebook post. We do not the way that we look at it is you know, generally what we're posting to our social media is something that our readers are going to care about. Um, and I think sometimes it's it's also easy for me to be like our readers don't care about this, but you know ultimately I'm probably wrong. People are still going to click on it. <laughs> see, you can see how many people have clicked on it. You know, um, try to maybe have fun with it instead of feeling like you're making somebody look at something that they maybe would not want to look at on a regular basis. Well, I mean, we all have broad. It's such a broad spectrum. Yeah. People that listen to us and follow our content and watch it. I mean, I tell it, my guy. I'm very, like, I'm kind of redneck and I'm kind of city yeah. on a country station. <laughs> Anything that I post that's kind of city, the trolls come out and bash all over. You know, <laughs> like the Sam Hunt stuff that I posted last night. Oh, the trolls are all over that. Oh, yeah. yeah the video, video you're going to get a few of those uh, yeah, pretty but, negative ones. Yeah. 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 City but versus country. I still got a reaction out of them. No, you, 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 you still did. It's still content to get people to interact. So and I don't care, just try it. Yeah, that's the number one goal, right? For you to post something and not have anybody click on it or have anybody interact with it, that's where. That's why I said about work Nobody smart. Cares. Make it as easy for yourself as possible, but let them let your personality shine through. Ultimately, people like people. You know, that's what's going to bring them back to you. Um, especially in this world of there, there are a lot of options for people now in media. You know, so if they are, if they are coming to you because they listen to you already and they enjoy you, they're they're going to be more apt to continue to do so if you just give them something different. You know, be quirky, be fun, have a personality. It's probably the number, you know, one thing that I say, especially to like our, our new writers, like who who are you and who do you want to be? And stick to that. 